Glory to God. Now, we are speaking on something real powerful on here. Now, the power of time is that the Holy Spirit uses time so that you can see what's inside of you. Nobody knows what's inside of them without time. Without time, you can never know what's inside of you. Because time has a way of digging deep within the reins of your heart for you to discover what you're really thinking. Now, saints, in life, do you know that you could think something according to something that sounds real great? Like, you know how um, Peter is in a place where he's saying, I'll die for you. But his real thought is, I don't know who you is. Are you hearing me? One place, Peter is thinking that he's thinking, I'll die for you. But his real thought is, who the, is this? Beep, beep, beep. I ain't never been with him. Beep, beep, beep. That's what Peter is thinking. Now, you notice what King Jesus did was he pinpointed a time. That's the power of time. He said, when the rooster crow, meaning right now at this present time, you can't identify the thought that I can see. But there is a time that's coming. There's a time that's on its way to you that you're going to see what's inside of you. Now, saints, here's the power of time. God gives you time to turn around what's inside of you. He gives you time to fix it. He gives you time to go and take the car to the service place and get new parts. He gives you time to deal with what is expired inside of you. The power of time is that he'll give you an opportunity to change the verdict. In my lifetime, I have met many people that they have the time to change the verdict, but they do nothing. So when the rooster crows, the verdict manifests. If you are a wise steward of time, you will find out the food that you're supposed to eat during the time. If you are a wise manager of time, you'll find out what is illegal for your systematic mindset? When you go to the gas station, they have three different type of pumps most times. 93, uh, I think 87, 89. It may differ different places. Then they have diesel gas but just giving you some of the options. If you pit a certain gas in your vehicle, your vehicle may drive different because it's underneath the influence of something that is not used to entering it. Or it could be underneath the influence of something that is adversarial to its original function. The same way it is with your soul. Your soul 
is not programmed to allow certain information in it. And once that information comes inside of it, it will defect the programming of the soul. The soul will start acting, behaving, and moving in a wrong manner. Satan uses time to infect you with options, things, so that when you do step, in, step back into the time of God, you'll have to battle what you gave your time over to prior. So what Satan does is he uses time to introduce foolishness to you so that when you step back into the time of God, now this is your temptation, the time that you intro was introduced to something that God didn't want you introduced to. So now when you go into prayer, you got to deal with what you invested your time in before. You ever hear somebody say when you go into prayer, you start thinking about cheeseburgers. But if you would have never had a cheeseburger, you would have never had to fight that when you go into prayer. So you're thinking about a cheeseburger because that's what you was introduced prior to you in this state, in this time where you're praying. When I start praying, I start thinking about what they did to me. Well, you was introduced to what they did to you. So all Satan is doing to distract you is introduce you to a time that wasn't underneath the anointing. Anybody that lets you stay messy is a fool, is a destroyer. They don't love you. All throughout your life, you'll run from people that truly love you. And you'll cling to people that truly hate you. If I find the will of God for my life and you got something bad to say about it, you're my enemy. It's just point blank. It's not that you don't understand. What is it to understand? You don't understand that I was sent to the earth, not for myself, but for God. And so God do whatever the beep he want to do with me when he want to do it. You don't understand that? What you need? A uh, Krispy Kreme donut to understand it. I need to take you to Spencer's for you to understand it. You don't understand that I wasn't created for your bald head self. I might have came through your family line. I didn't come from your family line. I came from God. I might have came through religiosity. I didn't come from religiosity. I came from God. Well, I just don't understand why, you know, what, what, who, who asked you? Nobody asked you to understand. The minute that you form me in my mother's womb, then your understanding will matter. If you are the one that's currently breathing life into me, then your understanding will matter. People that hate you allow you to remain messy. I met many people in my life that turned against me because I wouldn't receive the demons that they loved. You're not hearing me. Anybody that loves your wrong decisions, your unfruitful life, is your devil. You get mad at a person because they tell you not to hang with wrong people. Oh, I don't like that. They up there tell me not to hang with wrong people. They up there jealous of me. Baby, they're not jealous of you. I've never seen a stupid that was arousing my jealousy. I've never seen poverty that made me say, oh, I need to leave God to go follow this poverty. I've never seen dumb decisions that made me become covetous. In life, the Holy Spirit, he going to possess somebody to deal with the demonic you. We go throughout our whole life meeting people that are demons, their self. 
They are demons too. Well, how come I was with them? They ain't do me like that. Well, they was a demon too. You expected a demon to change you? Go look back at your past relationships. Go look back at your past sisterhoods. Go look back at your past mentorship. Well, how come they didn't do me like that? Well, why would a demon be adversarial to another demon? Y'all of the same family. A distracted man can't emphasize focus. A foolish man can't emphasize wisdom. A weak man can't emphasize strength. A poor man can't emphasize wealth. A free, a bound man can't emphasize freedom. A lazy man can't emphasize work ethic. A discouraged man can't emphasize diligence. A failing man, a falling man can't emphasize overcoming. A flawed man can't emphasize perfection. There's people constantly that are sent by the devil before you that are okay with your darkness. They're okay with it. I believe that a man before he gets with a woman should look at all the women that all the women around that woman that she called friends. Study. Yes. Study a woman's past. Why did she break up with a boyfriend? How many conferences has she been to? What do she believe? Is truth. What's her definition of faith? What's her definition of works? What's her definition of prayer? Do she pray? How long do she pray? What do she pray about? All these things you should learn. Why don't she pray? How long do she focus? What has she accomplished? What hasn't she accomplished? What was the purpose of the accomplishment? Who celebrated the accomplishment? Who was around her when she accomplished it? What did her accomplishments produce financially? You meet a woman all the time talking about how long they went to church, how long. Baby, you still broke. I, <laughs> I don't care how long you do. I don't care how long you prophesy, how long you lay hands on sick, how long you did all this stuff. You still broke, baby. You still never owned a house. So, 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 so all that, all that, all that jibber jabber that you got going on. Baby, it didn't produce nothing worthwhile. Things you should ask a man. You should find out what's the sowing account of a man. Who do he sow into? Why do he sow into them? Where's his investments? How do he spend his leisure time? Do he go to the casino? Do he go to the strip club? Does he smoke? What does he smoke? Why does he smoke? Does he want to quit smoking? That's for the woman that's not underneath me. A lot of things you don't get information on. Find out somebody's past. For real, you got to do it nowadays. Got to find out what are their failures, why they fail. What are their excuses? Who do they blame? If I meet you and you telling me, that you the way that you is because 30 years ago you got molested. 40 years ago you got molested. That's why you is who you is. I can identify that you're someone that does not know how to find wisdom. Because if 40 years ago Satan could do something to you and you have not found the grace, the wisdom to counteract Satan, I know that you're someone that cannot win battles. 
Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? How do you spend your time? What do you do? It tells me a lot about you. The power of time. What I'm dealing with right now is the power of time. It's not going to be my subject all tonight. I'm going to switch over into deeper stuff. How do you spend your time? Because that's where your heart is. You spend your time where your heart is. I've met people in my life that have a prayer regiment, but they still scared of sickness. So could you tell me that their prayers is effective? Hell no. What you praying for? You ain't got no authority, so stop praying. Go to sleep, baby. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Go to sleep. You, you're wasting time. Your prayer's not working. You still scared of sickness. You scared of viruses. Go to sleep. Don't do no devotional. Don't do no devotional. Because who are you devoted to? Sickness or God? Virus or victory? Who are you devoted to? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. All the things that you do what is the effectiveness of what you're doing? Time will show you what divine abilities you have not increased and what satanic abilities that you have permitted. You heard what I said? Time will show you what divine abilities you have not increased and what demonic abilities you have permitted time the power of time is that you'll be able to recognize what you have allowed inside of you that is anti-money anti-progress anti-favor anti-christ The power of time is that you don't really, you have not identified all the thoughts that you're going to think because you have not seen every situation you will encounter in the future. You don't know what you're going to be tempted with in the future, but through wisdom, you can identify what you're going to be tempted with because you can study your wrong decisions that you've made in the past to know what whatever you was introduced to is, is the only thing that can tempt you. So some of you are, watch this here. All your life, you have made wrong decisions about men. Just look at your child's father. Look at the man that you chose to have a child with. So already, you know that you're not wise about which man to pick. You know that. You know that. So imagine God pitch you underneath a man of God. You know, this is not the man of God for me. I'm about to move on with my life. Baby, what you, what you fail to understand is that you already got a demon of picking the wrong man. See, as, I, as I'm getting wiser and older in life, I'm starting to pit different dots together and I start understanding people better. Remember, Jesus increased in wisdom. So even though God was in a body, that body did not know everything. Now, the body knows everything because it has an anointed from the Holy One and knows all things, but it doesn't know what it knows until time comes. Time allows you to know what you knew, but you didn't know that you knew it. 
So if I ask you, are you hungry? I already know that you're hungry according to my divine knowledge. But I may not be in a time where I can access the knowledge that I do know. So I will have to come to you and ask you, are you hungry? Now my knowledge knows that you're hungry. My God. My knowledge knows that you're hungry. But the time that I am, I'm in right now, is not accessing the knowledge that I know. So back to what I was saying. If you didn't pick the right baby father, don't be all cocky about picking the right man of God. Because you already have made a decision of error in this bracket. I'm showing you how you could look at what you was introduced to in the past to recognize what's going to oppose you in the future. Like some people have never finished a task. So don't be so cocky about God telling you to leave a thing. Because you are already somebody that never completed beep in the first place. So you are someone that needs to recognize, is this the former demon that have been ruling me all along? Causing this decision or is it God? And then you have to identify why would God permit me to operate in the same spirit that has kept me broke and have kept me unproductive? Why wouldn't God stretch me out of this? So why would God keep on telling me to leave a thing, leave a thing? Because now God is empowering something that's adversarial to what he wants to change. There's so much wisdom in what I'm telling you right now. I'm helping you. I'm showing you how Satan wins you in life. You don't recognize your wrongness. And see, I, you know, here's the main problem. Here's the main problem. Is that we all heard these scriptures. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ, that, that walk after, uh, after spirit, not after flesh. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. We think it's condemnation to use the wisdom to recognize this is what I've been introduced to in my past. So we use all these scriptures and we try to run away from what ourselves have been introduced to. If you've been introduced to it, that means that it is a demon that is going to try to re-enter. And it's going to be a demon that is going to buffet you when you're in your newness of life. So it's not all that smart to act like it's never going to happen to you. Because now you're unprepared when it does. If you are whole, all God, all Satan going to do the God of this world is going to bring a sexy man to you. That's all he's going to do. Because your origin, according to the flesh, is whole. Lust. So all Satan going to do is bring a man that looks sexy to you. That's all Satan going to do. Because your origin, according to the flesh, is whole. Samson did not know his origin according to the flesh. He came from men that missed the timing of God. So saints, he's in a timing where Delilah is not in this timing. 
and he misses. But his origin comes from men that miss the timing of God. Look at when the angel came. I believe it was his dad, but his parents kept on miss. One of his parents kept missing the angel. So his origin in the natural, the flesh, is miss the timing of God. But he never identifies with it. Why? Because he's anointed. That's everybody's story. I'm powerful. I'm anointed. I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. That's everybody's story. Look at your former decisions. That's the only demon that's going to fight you for the rest of your life. The same demon that influenced you to be on drugs in the past is the only demon that's going to fight you in the future. You're only getting fought by what you have allowed to open up yourself to. So Saint, sometimes I've heard men say, I'm, I'm struggling in my mind. I don't understand what they're talking about. I don't. Because I've, I've only, since my youth, I've opened up myself to being a dominator. I first was a warrior, now I'm a champion. A warrior pits the work in. A champion rests in their finished works. So I don't understand a man that comes to me and tell me, you know, prophet, I'm struggling right now. I'm in my mind, I don't understand. In the, in the back of my mind, I want to slap him. In my mind, I want to tell him, wake up. I'm conscious of dominating. I'm not conscious of struggle. That's why I could never preach a gospel like that. I never could preach you know, we, we make mistakes, we're flawed, we're, you know, we're not going to do everything right. I can't preach like that. A man talks out of the realm that he has opened up himself to. You don't have to hate somebody that talks like that. Just know that that's what they have opened up their self to. So you deal with everybody according to knowledge. I hate stagnation, so I don't understand people that stagnated. I hate closed doors on something that God wants to accomplish. When I, when I say closed doors, I don't mean literally. What I mean is hindrances, delays, um, uh, roadblocks, barriers, because I break through them. I'm going to break through it. I'm going to break through it. I'm going to break through it. I've never gotten nervous in life. Oh, if, well, if somebody defeat me. If you could overcome my arsenal of weapons, I will salute you. Because we don't battle in the flesh. There's higher weapons. I remember there was a time <laughs> in my life. Even now, like I, I have like several like. Uh, how could I disclose this? Now I can't disclose it. But one day the spirit was laughing. And the Holy Spirit said, if somebody could break through here, I can't tell you the rest. You should really get to understand angels. The appearance of angels. 
the job of angels. What do angels do? I don't know if you recall, but one day we was on a periscope and I said, there was a big old angel that came, it was a tall angel. Its head was above the clouds. The angel said, I've come to you less harm and danger, less something worse happens to you on the earth. A um, couple weeks later, my car spinned out of control, was on the, on, on the highway, spin over control, spinned across the highway, hit the barrier before flipping over. Meanwhile, while I was inside of this event, I'm not screaming. I'm not saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm not saying the blood. I'm not saying none of those things. I'm just watching it happen because it's spiritual. I was hoping that, but I was hoping that my car wouldn't flip over the hill because there's a hill right there. And then underneath the hill is like nothing, like it's like flat, like your, your car could fly over. So the working of angels, their job is they already know that Satan has a chip against you. They already know that. That's why you should humble yourself in this life. That's why you should all the more become more solely dependent on the father. Because when you come into this life, all of the angelic in heaven, the angels that's assigned to you, they know that there's already a, a plan devised against you. So when you get inside of the will of God and your prayer list and your praise list and you're unthankful and you just living your whole life like nothing going to happen to me. God got me. All things work together for my good. I love God. I'm called according to his purpose. You know, I walk by faith and not by sight. Ooh, oh, if God be for me, who could be against me? And you just live like that. You lose. You lose. Because saints, every demon, they are aware of the word of God. They don't respect the word of God coming out of the mouth of somebody that does not even respect the word to do it. And demons are students of the word. So they actually know what is in the word that could stop them from effectively fulfilling their plan and their weapon against you. They know if you're not doing it. They know that submission is the only thing that could resist them. So if you ain't got nobody to submit to, they know you can't resist them. So all they do is mess up your submission. So you can live your whole life underneath subjection to them. They control you financially and you the woman of God. You the man of God. I'm powerful. Are you Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I, I, I love God with all my heart. And all those stuff, the demon in the back laughing. <laughs> All of your finances is underneath their control. All of your health in the future is underneath their control. Your mama was sick, you're going to be sick. You ain't do nothing different. Your dad missed God, you miss God. There's no difference. Your mama was a smoker. You smoke too.
you're destroying the altars of Satan. Your parents struggled with their attitudes. They gave people a piece of their mind. You're the same way. Your parents never wanted patience, never wanted to wait, never wanted to put the work in. You're the same way. It is very idiotic when you can't spot that you're creating the same life that was created by a generation that didn't achieve nothing. Very idiotic. And see, the reason why people that have knowledge of the Bible oftentimes do not win in these areas because you're taught to run from it. You run from it with scriptures. You speak scriptures that make you feel as if that's not you. But see, there's nothing wrong with speaking the scriptures. But are you willing to conform yourself to the scripture that you're talking about? Because the scripture you're talking about is a harvest for submission. It's a harvest for not being hardhead. It's a harvest for being obedient. Are you hearing me? So don't just pick and choose because it sounds sweet. Are you willing to accept the bitter to live in this sweet? Because it's bitter when you want to hang with people and God say you stay to yourself. It's bitter because it goes against your premature schedule. It is bitter when you decide how your life going to be as a woman. And God say, no, the hell is not. This is how I want it to be. This is what I call you to be. This is what I say you be. This is what I choose you to be. When you as a man say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to fulfill this. And God say, no, you're not. You called to go to Nineveh. You're going to Nineveh. You called to hide by the brook Cherry. Hide at the brook Cherry. You're called to walk around the walls of Jericho. Walk around the walls of Jericho. See, the bitter is that God is going to make you a submitter to things that you formerly was not enthusiastic about. Being born again doesn't mean that God caters to your original desires. I mean, God goes against it. And when he see you dead to yourself, then he gives you the desires of your heart. God don't let you have your way. He actually loves when he finds out your ways. So that he can go against it. I've often seen women talk about, you know, I want my wedding to be like this. I want to walk down the aisle. I want to put on a dress. You know, sometimes you watch TV shows, you hear a woman talk about that. And then you look at the woman and you look how dramalistic she is and how immature she is. One time I was watching a show and a woman told her man, I know you make the money, but it's not about what you want. It's about what I want. And the man said, yeah, you're right. You, 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 <laughs> you watch people, how they have such dreams, but they don't even fit the dream. You might have dreams, but are you a dream? <laughs> I've listened to women say, you know, I want my man, I want a rich man, I want a man that know how to take care of me. But do you think a man with a lot of money is going to pick you? Do you meet the level 
of money he make? Well, prophet, what do you mean? Are you rich in your joy? Are you rich in your peace? I'm talking general. I'm, I'm talking general. I'm saying in life how many people have different demands. But what's your demand? What can be demanded about you? Are you rich in pleasure? Are you rich in maturity? You know how many men will never go nowhere in life because every place they bring their wife? Oh, I don't like how she shook your head. I, I don't like how he's in competition with you, baby. He's in competition with you, baby. You know how many men walked away from millions of dollars because of a stupid woman? You know how many women got destroyed because a man that's not sensitive to the Holy Ghost? You know how many women that got destroyed because of a man that did not love God? The man brings them into all the activities that they do. And that woman keeps corrupting herself over and over and over again. She knows better. But it's her attempt to be submissive to a foolish man. She lives in addictions. She lives in bad habits. Listening to a man that doesn't fear. God. I can't even say her God. Because your God is whoever you worship. You notice I had to say. Doesn't fear God. Couldn't say fear her God because. Her God, if it was her God, she would listen to her God. All throughout life, time is an eye opener. You can speak such powerful words in the time where you feel strength, you feel encouraged. I remember there, 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 was a, there was a guy in my ministry called one of my daughters and started rebuking them. Here's what he said. You see, prophet, he don't let everybody get close to him. Make sure you be loyal to him. Make sure you do what he say and respect him. Don't do him wrong. Because there's a lot of people keep doing him wrong. Don't be another statistic. This, this is what the guy is telling one of my daughters. Don't be like everybody else. Get favor with profit and then do him wrong. Do you know that the guy is not here? Do you know that the daughter is here? True story. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting in the cut just watching. Because I know the time of everybody. Meanwhile, I'm just watching in the back as he talk his talk. Heart is deceitfully wicked. This broadcast is eye-opening because I'm just showing you how people, they talk and they talk and they say things because they feel strong. They feel hype. Your energy is not confirmation of your purity. If you're taking notes, write that down. I just heard the Holy Ghost say that. Wow. Your energy is not confirmation of your purity. If you're someone that lives by energy, you'll die by it. If you're taking us, write that down. I just heard the Spirit of the Lord just say that. If you're someone that lives by energy, you'll die by it. 
God, which is the spirit of God, feels no energy in the earth, feels darkness. It says, let there be light. God breaks out of what he feels and changes the environment to what he wants to feel. He feels darkness all around him. You know what darkness feels like? Weariness. You know what darkness feels like? Suicide. You know what darkness feels like? Quitting. You know what darkness feels like? Negativity. And God says, no, I'm going to invoke my system on this system that I feel. Very powerful words here. And if you're smart, you will listen to a wise king talking to you. I'm not trying to accomplish. I accomplish. I set new goals all the time because I reach my goals. And I reach them quicker than I thought that I reach them. I have mental goals, do you? Everything is not financial. I have emotional goals, do you? I remember I had set myself up and I realized why I set myself up. I was gonna meet a lot of sorrowful people in life. I was gonna meet a lot of people that would target my joy. But I had set myself up long time ago to walk in supernatural joy, the oil of joy. So every situation I've ever faced in life, nobody was able to take my strength from me. I know how to forgive you. That don't mean I like you. And that don't mean I'm going to talk to you. That don't mean that I'm ever going to say anything to you ever. But I forgive you. I set my own emotional goals, not... I'm not waiting for you. I set emotional goals, have you? I set physical goals. I decided a long time ago I wasn't going to be sick. I went through 17 plus years of chronic asthma. Not being able to breathe. Bad acne all over my face, all over my body. Bad skin condition. We call it heat rash, all those different type of things. I decided I was going to have baby skin. I decided. Then you listen to the Holy Ghost on how to manifest it. I don't leave my house without an instruction. I don't leave my city without an instruction. I don't eat without an instruction. I do nothing in life without an instruction. So I don't talk about the devil just because the devil doesn't have no power. No, the devil will mess you up. And Satan will defeat anybody, especially if you're not coming in the submission to the name of the Lord. You'll lose. Satan whoops a lot of religious people. I have met religious people that are defeated by Satan. They'll tell you Bible stories. They'll talk about the scriptures. And Satan has his foot on their neck. And they prayed, blood, the name of Jesus, the blood. And nothing works. Because Satan don't respect anybody that don't respect the God that they're trying to use their name. They're trying to use the name of God that they don't even respect. So God, Satan don't have no authority to respect them. I have physical goals, do you? You should have 
targets that you want to meet in your mind. Some of you I have never thought about never having another anxiety attack. That's why you're underneath that demon. That demon have run circles all around you. Imagine you got a lot of knowledge but still have anxiety attacks. Crazy. Anxiety is a demon. Imagine you got all that knowledge and have doubt, double-mindedness, inconsistency in your mind. Imagine you got all that knowledge and you still get jealous. Competition, covetous. You look at other people's life and think that you should have it. You feel insecure about people reaching their other levels of wisdom. Rejoicing purges you of a wrong perception. That's why even the Bible says you should rejoice with those that rejoice. If you don't rejoice with them, you might get jealous of them. I know personally, one thing that I have did, no, no one that I've never gotten to no, no fight with no other prophet. Well, they can fight with me. They, I'm not going to get in no fight with them. It's because I've prayed for people to reach their full success in ministry. That every investor that's supposed to sow into them would sow into them. That every person that's supposed to push them to their next level purity, focus, wisdom, that they would have those people around them. So if somebody tried to fight me, they have to fight and, and they have to fight in their, uh, in their imagination. When you rejoice with people, you'll never find yourself fighting or being envious of them. God doesn't have to come to me and say, well, son, I gave somebody the anointing. I just want to apologize that I didn't give it to you. I'm sorry. I do my part. I'm going to eat. Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm move in something spectacular. Because I do my part. You rejoice with those that rejoice. I'm not going to be at the table starving. I'm not going to be at the table when the next move of God, when the next outpouring of the spirit. Jesus said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. You know what I'm talking about? There's an anointing that's coming on you as you're listening to me. As you're listening to me, there's oil flowing in the mind. Every word that I'm speaking, sharper than a two-edged sword. I'm cutting layers off of you, of the clothing line of Satan. The thing about Legion, I just heard the Spirit say this. Legion knew how to break the chains of the natural, but didn't know how to break the chains of the spiritual. If you remember when they were pit legion in chains he'll break them off but couldn't break the chain in his mind couldn't break the chain in his heart his inward man see some of you are you can fight somebody if somebody come to you right now slap you you'll know how to throw down with them you know how to fight a natural but you've never been taught how to clap back in the spirit realm you've never been taught that you never well i i won't i won't say you, you never perfected warring in the spirit. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to sit there and train your mind to think the word.
Anybody could pick up a gun. Anybody could get a knife. Anybody could throw their hand and punch you in the eye. Anybody could do that. But battles are not won that way. You know, it's after you beat somebody up in the body. What have you accomplished in the spirit? Nothing. Nothing. You probably actually escalate more things because now who is connected to them may escalate the situation, want revenge. How many people have we seen get into fights and then somebody pull out a gun, shoot them and kill them? See, it, that wasn't the way to win the battle. As a matter of fact, the wisdom to win the battle, if you're going to meet the person, is to see if you could stop the war. People get together, say, come on, let's fight. We're going to settle this once and for all. Nothing is ever settled once and for all when it's natural and fleshly. Satan is the biggest instigator of all time. Satan will remind you that you lost a battle just to arouse you to engage it again. How do you think that gang members, one of their members gets shot and then they rally all together and go shoot somebody up? Satan is an instigator. How many people fight with one another because somebody else is telling them, oh, you just going to let them slide on what they did to you? Be careful of people that are your immaturity demons. They love to see you messy. You talking about what this person did to me, but what about what you're doing to me? You spirit of bitterness. Oh, so you won't come talk to me. You spirit of, bitter, you spirit of bitterness. You want to hide behind what they did to me. But what about what you're doing to me? When the word of God says that don't let no root of bitterness rise up in you, which is the very thing by which many have become defiled. So you have come to defile me. But you're talking about what they did to me. But I see you spirit of bitterness. You're trying to defile me. You're talking about what they did, but what about what you're doing? You come to defile me. See, when you have wisdom, you look at life from a different angle. And you recognize the objective of people's words. The objective of what they're saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk some deep stuff on here. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 97 says this. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Look at verse 39 and 98. That through your commandments... You have made me wiser than mine enemies. Whoa. That means that what you're commanding me to do, Lord, what you're telling me I should do is making me wiser than all my enemies. Now, saints, when we hear enemies, the first thing people be thinking about is the natural. You know, this person don't like me. This person don't like me. But saints, everybody got enemies. Even if you can't identify currently who don't like you and who like you, that's, there's enemies 24-7 in your life because every fallen angel is looking to make a mockery out of you. To make you emotional, to make you angry, to make you bitter, to make you distracted, to make you miss the mark of your calling. So you always have enemies. If you never look at a physical body and call somebody your enemy, you got an enemy in the spirit, an enemy in the thought life, an enemy in the emotion life, an enemy in the financial life. And it says that the commandments of God makes you wiser than your enemies. That means the things that come to defeat you, the entities, the spirits that come to defeat you in the mind, in the body, in the finances, you will be wiser than them. 
That means that you will have the victory over them. They will not be able to impart the lifestyle mentally, emotionally, physically, financially that they want you to be in. See, even sickness is the and disease it is the um it is the 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 book of demons. Poverty is the scroll of devils. All my entrepreneurs on here always remember this. The key to being an entrepreneur is you're not always going to have the entrepreneurship work in the area of customers coming to you. You may need to sow yourself Get money, so honor God, and he'll promote you to your own business. This is what a lot of people are not telling people. Everybody is quick to become, oh, I'm a boss, or oh, I'm an owner. A boss is a promotion. I didn't just start JHM. I served and submitted myself the spirit said, JHM. That's what the spirit said. Promotion. Jesus didn't start his business, his entrepreneurship, until he turned 30. So what is he doing at 25, 26, 27? He's serving. He's unlocking. He's humbling himself. Sometimes we don't want to go work for a boss because we proud. It's not because we blessed. We proud. We don't want nobody up to times, oh, oh, that slave. That ain't no slavery. Slavery is if I take money and I don't sow it. Slavery is not me unlocking money with a paycheck. You'll find out that you're in more slavery if you don't got a job because now your finances start getting low. You start having bills. You, you're enslaved. So while Satan be acting like getting a job is slavery, you're not having a job is slavery. Entrepreneurship, it comes at, as a promotion. Number one, there's going to be people bringing you money. So who have you brought money? Oh, you're not hearing me. People are going to come serve your business. So whose business have you served? Ouch. Somebody touch your neighbor neck. That's, that's a hard neck right there. Now, mind you, I'm all for neck. <laughs> neck. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard neck right there. Neck that hurt. Ouch. Ouch all the way in your couch. Ouch. All the, all the way in your... All the way in your couch. Stop. Stop. Say, if you ever see somebody playing around and they start fighting, stop, man, stop. stop. Yeah, man, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop! Saints, little children is crazy. Them niggas be fighting. <laughs> Listen, never leave two little children unsupervised. Them they be fighting. If you turn around, right, got him in a neck move. Got him in a neck move. Hey, 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 hey. Never leave. And see, we think that it's the boys that be fighting. It be them girls that be fighting more aggressive.
Some of y'all need to understand kidonomics. Kids are thugs in a body. <laughs> a child is a thug. All right? They got a lot of hell in them. <laughs> and some of y'all have been around four, three, two children. Children got hell inside of them. All right? Saints, think about what you used to do when you was a child. Some of y'all were sexual as children. The other day, these little girls, they was little girls. Looked like they 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're our Kelly spirits. Little girls saw some. Yeah, he cute. Girl, you smell like pee. Bro, you ain't even. You still wear underwear with SpongeBob SquarePants. What you doing looking at man's? I'm old enough to be your father. <laughs> Shake my head at this generation. They up there young. Nowadays, girl, 12 years old, you think that she going to go play basketball. She going to go pick up her daughter. I'm going to a recreation center. Okay, well, well I, ho I hope y'all win the, I hope y'all win the uh, championship, the tournament this year. What you mean? You say you're going to the, 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 uh, you told me that you're going to 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 go to go go. Yeah, my my baby there. Oh, you are well, you young? You dating? You got a baby over there? What's it? What's his name? No, 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 no. I'm talking about. I got a child. Well, if you twelve, you got child. And they two years old. That mean at ten. What the? Let me keep on moving on. Let me keep on moving on. Let me move. Psalm one nineteen. Verse 101 says, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word. Saints, you understand what refrain mean? That you train your schedule, your direction to not yield to feelings. You have built yourself up to not be compulsive to go the wrong route. You, even though it's introduced to you, it's an option. You are choosing not to give in to the same mental demons that the generation before you chose. 
the mindsets, the words, the decision making, the company, you're rejecting it. That I might keep your word. So the other path had other words in it that wasn't from God. Other instructions, other counsels, other mindsets, other systems. But you're saying, I choose to keep your word. I reject the words that are on this path. Choose the word that's on this path. Hallelujah. 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 Another thing I want to emphasize is this. Don't let the enemy get you so strong on trying to fight people. The Spirit of the Lord telling me to tell you this. That yes, devils operate as people, as people, not just through them, as them. But saints, the whole goal of Satan and demons is to get your attention on them. That's why they use people to act out their will so that you could be so involved on what Satan is doing. Don't even focus on the devil so strong in prayer. Saints, when you pray, don't try to step into all this warfare so heavily. Spend your prayer adoring King Jesus, giving him worship and praise and thanksgiving. Don't spend your prayer time trying to bind and break and, and, and constantly do that uh, try to deal with the satanic kingdom. No, the satanic kingdom is afraid of you living in the courts of God. They are afraid of you living in the gates of the Lord. So stay in thanksgiving. Stay in praise. Saints, Paul and Silas did not magnify that Satan had unjustly arrested them and did them evil and beat them. They begin to praise. They begin to exalt the name of the Lord. And that's when the walls of that jail, everything began to shake with that earthquake. God sent help. The same way. In the word. When we see Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they're dancing in that fire. There's a fourth man. Their attention is on that fourth man. Their attention is on King Jesus, rather. Saints, as you live through life, you got to understand what God wants you to do is start praising more than ever. Give them thanks. Everything is a learning experience. Even a bad decision, God would prophetically talk to you and give you insight, mentorship. Progress is overdue. Remember what I'm telling you. Progress is overdue. There are sides of your womanhood that you were supposed to know by now but you've been hindered by Satan. There's sides of your manhood that has been hindered. You should have knew it by now. Oh, it was because of them. No, it's not because of nobody. It's because of you. You are deciding what you unlock and what you lock up. You are deciding it. One of the greatest decisions you'll make in life is to take your eyes off of unfaithful people, distracted people. Take your eyes off of them because you don't want to imitate them. And saints, in every environment, in every location, there's somebody that is already doing what you was created to do.
in every location, <clears throat> there's somebody that's doing something that you were supposed to be a professional of. And God uses them to jumpstart you. I've been dealing with that with sowing. That's one of the most powerful things that God been teaching me about sowing is that there's always somebody around you that is sowing the way that you was created to sow. Saints, how did I know about the thousand dollar seed? I saw the man of God talking about him sowing a thousand dollar seed. There's always somebody doing something that you was called, sculptured by the Father to be doing. You may not be at that level, but that show you how much time you're wasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, saints, when, when I look at somebody that's doing something that I'm created to do, it's a signal to me how much time is being wasted, how far I should have been. What is holding up my time? Because they're doing something to show me what I should be doing. Peter should have been nailing at Jesus' feet with his seed. The woman with the alabaster box is showing Peter. You should have been nailing at Jesus' feet with your seed. Look at her. She's kneeling with her seed. I got a joke in my mind. You know, I got a joke, but I salute the older people in my ministry. When I meet an older person in my ministry, they kneel down and give me their seed. They respect my apostleship. You, you, know, you know what the younger generation do? Almost every young person that I know. <laughs> they hand you your seed. Here, Papa, here, Papa, here. There's a pride that this younger generation got real strong on them. Even though they, even if they're not utterly disrespectful, they still got that pride. Like, but the older people, every older person I know, when they see me, if they meet me in public, anywhere they see me, they'll get down and give me their seed. The younger generation, they stand up. Mind you, that's not going to take you to hell. Just, I, 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 I'm just dealing with excellence. I'm dealing with levels. That's not going to take you to hell. You see what I'm saying? You hand me your seat, that, that ain't going to take you to hell. But I'm dealing with mindsets. The older generation obviously ain't got nothing to lose. They love humility. They, 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 they recognize who I am. A younger generation, like, you know. <laughs> One time I told somebody, they, 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 I read their mind. I told, just get down and give me the seat. <laughs> Blessed, be Blessed be God. Get down, baby. You know what I want. Get down, baby. Just get down and give me the seat, baby. Just, Get down and give me the seed. You thinking about it, just get down and give me the seed. Stop wrestling and fighting. Just get down and give me the seed. But the older generation, they, they just... Angel be trying to get people down. It's like, no, I'm not. <clears throat> stop. Stop. Get down, baby. It's okay. It's okay. There's other reasons we can get the other reasons you can get down to it. It's other, it's other reasons. I know. I know. I know. It's other reasons you can get down to. All right. Get down for a good cause. Other reasons you can get down to it. Get down for a good cause. Get, There's always someone around you that's sowing the way that you're supposed to sow. Their seed grace is phenomenal. 
There's seed, there's seed grace. There's seed grace is powerful. Saints, you know what I love about seed sowing? Is that there's actually some people that walk in higher measures of glory than others. But the good thing about it is that you could actually piggyback off of them to, to, to apprehend their realm. So they're at a certain level. God will let them be in your proximity so that you could feed off of the grace that they have entertained. One thing that you got to catch about bountiful sores is that they know something that you don't know that you know yet. A bountiful sower has seen the great God Jehovah as a provisional champion. They know that the system of God can't lose. And so their giving is a reflection of their complete rest. They have chosen to rest in the finished work of Jesus and the resurrection power that he has made beneficial to them in the now. There's a lot of things that you can learn about a bountiful sower. That they have become fearless in their observation. Like my Alicia, I pray you never fall away. My Alicia been with me for years. I pray my Alicia never fall away. And what, what I like about my Alicia is that my Alicia have had times where I have done her like the Saphonician woman. And my Alicia has exceeded in virtue. I pray she never fall away. And, and my Alicia, one time she saw me, I think that over a year ago or something. Yeah, over a year ago. She saw me in public and she sold right there in the public. Just saw me spontaneously and sold. I, see, I pray that Satan never corrupt her because of her beautiful honor. Those of you all that honor beautifully, never let Satan corrupt that in you. And, and know that you're going to have to be tested so that you can see whether or not you're going to let Satan corrupt that in you. Because you play a part in healing the heart of God. Sowers... They heal the heart of God. Remember, God go through a lot of rejection. The Spirit of God go through a lot of grief. The Spirit of the Lord go through a lot of people turning him away. When you are sower, you are a healer of God. Wow. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe you hold my every moment. You come my regency. You walk with me through fire. And you heal all my disease. And I trust in you. Yes, I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. A sower is a healer of God. When you're sowing, you're healing God. I heard the Spirit of the Lord tell me before I got on here that Noah healed me. See, God was hurting. Some people don't understand when God said that he repented that he made man. 
See, a sower, they recognize the hurt of God. Wow. Wow. See, I, I, oh my gosh, I couldn't teach this years ago. See, a sower has a prophetic anointing to see God's heart breaks. And they know that God has been through scenarios where he wasn't honored and respected and treated correctly. So, so when they start sowing, they saying, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be the doctor that heals. See, a sower is a doctor that heals God's soul wounds. A sower is a doctor that heals God's soul. What? They heal God's soul wounds. So what, what can we catch? A bountiful sower is a glory light to God's soul. Man. See, this is going to put a whole new spin. So, uh, so I'm going to be sowing like crazy this week. Because, see, I'm receiving the grace that's on this. Never stop sowing. There's a due season. The angels be in the background cheering you on, hoping that you never miss the due season. See, angels, they don't want you to miss the due season because they know that you're ministering to God's heart and God is going to explode in his reaction to you. So and wait for the explosion of God. My God. Wait for God to explode upon your life. I never heard that before. A sower is the glory light to God's soul. A sower is the healer of God. A sower is a doctor healing God's soul wounds. God gets wounded when he's not honored, when he's not respected, when people live their whole life never sowing money into his work, never sowing money. Like, for instance, sometimes people be like, I love God so much. But they never sold 20,000 to his work. They never sold 25,000, 30,000 to his work. And they, they, they will proudly declare, you know, I love God. I fear God so much. Look at page 23 of Extremely Rich and it's from God. Now, mind you, I'm not selling this book publicly. The only way you can get a copy of this book is personally. I'm not selling this book publicly. So if you see this book anywhere, it's a scam. I got all the copies of this book in my possession. Page 23 says, every time you sow a seed into your man of God that is teaching you the word, you are exercising wealth authority. Wow. Wealth authority. You're exercising wealth authority. You are commanding wealth and riches to find you on earth. It says you are commanding wealth and riches to find you on earth. You are moving just like King Jesus on the earth with the business anointing. I'm going to tell y'all the way that you can get this book and, 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 and we could send it out to you this week. I'm not talking about those of you that already got it. You good. I, uh, 
it, now if you want it again, fine. But I want you to have this book because there is money cometh on this book with the wisdom that you'll have on little things that you don't be seeing and things that you do be seeing that you should increase your reaction in what you do see. And there's things that you don't be seeing that you need to eradicate that blocks divine money and the plan of God for your money from getting to you. Saints, why you like nice stuff and you don't be having a lot of money? Because you came from royalty. But see, what the devil will have you do is buy the stuff before time, get in debt, and God was going to give it to you after you finish your sewing assignment. And most times, saints, I got all these Jordans, right? Look, people be giving me Jordans. Look, I ain't even wear these yet. I got these right here just next to me. I ain't even wear these yet. Jordans. Real Jordans, too. And saints, you know, I could lick this shoe but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bother with it. Uh, but I like this shoe. Big old, big old shoe. I like it. And it's Jordans, real Jordans. And Saints, I was thinking about it. I got some size 11 Jordans that I was about to sew into somebody. And they're real nice. I got compliments on it yesterday. Everybody kept on complimenting me where I go. But I'm, I'm, I want, I want to sew the, sew the shoe. And then I got some ten, I, I got some other Jordans, some black and blue Jordans that I'm about to sew. Brand new. So what you got to catch is I'm constantly sewing. But saints, I got over, I got over 20 pairs of Jordans. I got probably got over 30. I got racks and upon racks and upon racks. Like saints the other day it hit me. I am really wealthy. Saints, I got a whole section of Adidas shirt, whole section of Jordan shirt, whole section of JHM shirts. I got JHM shirts that I haven't worn yet. Saints, and I thought about it. But see, what I keep on doing is sewing. Like I'll sew clothes. But then I reap clothes back. So the seed works for everything. I sow Jordans, I reap all these Jordans back. The woman in my ministry is so sweet. They they just like Luke chapter six, uh, Luke chapter eight. They be giving me nice gifts, boy. I'm talking about gifts, nice gifts. But see, I triple back and I start sowing the gifts into other people's life as well from my own purchases. Meaning I go buy gifts and sow it into people. So, so when my daughters, when, when people in my ministry start buying stuff, they don't be knowing that I had just did that. Like for instance, let me give you an example. I had bought somebody some costly robes, right? Last year for Christmas, but then um, one of the angels in this ministry bought me Versace robe. You, you ain't hearing me, man. Now, mind you, mind you, after I had just set minds out, hers arrived. And since with that revelation, I got the revelation is that that. God be having your harvest already prepared before you sow your seed. Because when I went go sow mines to give mines to someone, she was sowing it into me. So she listening with the Holy Ghost to give me the seed. Like, for instance, like uh, Victoria in the ministry, right? I don't know if y'all remember. Remember, I did a meet at McKinney, and I walked over to that row. I was in the middle of the aisle. And remember, the, the young lady walked up, gave me the $1,000 seed. I said, you gave me a $1,000 seed. She, she the one that got her fast car, her dream car. 
But I got to give her a warning on that because I saw her get into an accident in that car. That, that was going to be how Satan take her out. That's how Satan tried to take people out prematurely. That's why you 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 want to be real cautious. That's why you stay connected, you stay focused, you stay pure, you stay obedient. You don't, you don't live in no secret sin because then that's how the enemy he see he see just like Job. Job had all that stuff, all that stuff moving. But look, Satan is after uh, Job's children. And see, uh, the, 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 the one that broke this all open was Denise. Denise delivering her daughters. Denise is uh, 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 the mother of uh, Victoria. And see, I pray Denise stay free. Because see, Denise got, got, got to keep in remembrance. She, she bringing her daughters to break that curse. You see what I'm saying? I love that about JHM as well. Like there's a lot of people that are family and they influence their family to come and set their family free. Like you'll have to really be watchful and pray because jealousy is Satan. Satan look at how you increase in the harvest that you get. Satan say, well, I'm going to get you. Somehow, I'm gonna get you back. And there's some Jordans right here. Now, saints, watch this here. These some Jordans. This make you feel good. When you are so a God brings stuff into your life to make you feel good. God brings stuff into your life to make you feel appreciated by him. I remember Macy brought, bought me my first Versace uh, uh, robe as far as like the, the whole flow uh, of, of, of from the ministry. Now you think about it. All Macy got to do is stay connected, keep on sewing, keep on listening, keep on sanctifying herself so that she'll never go back to what Satan has already declared is going to be who she be in this life. See, Satan be up there prophesying who y'all going to be. Now, some of y'all going to get judged because you got this book right in your presence and you won't read it. Where you want to get, where, 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 where you want your pinky toe to get blown off, huh? Where you want to get, pow. You got this book right in your presence and you won't read it. Let's go to page 23. It says, remember King Jesus told his mother, I must be about my father's business. Sowing and reaping is a major part of the father's business. Look at page 23. The Lord wants to raise you up to be his business partner in the earth. You are a kingdom citizen. I want to say this real raw, because the Spirit just told me to elaborate on this. And see, some of you young women that be sowing into my ministry, the Holy Ghost be doing that to protect you from getting destroyed by the lion. See, there's a spirit that's happening into a lot of our young men in this generation. Where all, all they see, they see a woman as a sex object. They just want to dux you and then they don't got nothing for your mind. They don't got nothing for your emotions. They don't got nothing for your, your progress. As a, they don't got nothing for you. They don't got no anointing for you. And see, in this life, those seeds combat 
was scheduled with somebody just going to use you and just have no value of who you is. They don't care about your soul. They don't care about your mind. They just see you as another um, moment of pleasure and then that's it. They don't care nothing about you. They're not trying to mentor you, feed you, give you nothing mentally to take you to eternal life. That's not their goal. And so in a time that's so widespread like that, the seed protects you from illegal relationships. See, when you're a sower, God will have that boy start acting funny. He'll have that woman start acting funny because you're not supposed to be in a relationship with them. See, when you got a Mary Magdalene destiny, you can't be acting as if you, you easy. Letting an ungodly man enjoy you. Letting an ungodly man spew venom into you and stuff like that. You can't, you can't let that happen. Because now... There, there are consequences that come. There's sexual consequences. There's mental consequences. And people understood that sex with an ungodly person, an ungodly man, that man releasing satanic spirits to you. What the spirit told me to emphasize, because some of y'all young, when you're young, you do a lot of dumb stuff. When you're young, you can be naive, you can lack wisdom. When you're young, you you horny. So you don't be making right decisions. You're there, oh, look at him, ooh, ooh. There's a, there's a blind spot of stupidity that's in that young years. And see, we don't talk about it enough. When you young in your 20s and 30s, you still finding yourself. You don't know who the beep you is. And you don't know every wise decision. You've been talking about, you know God, you know God. Yeah, yeah, but your age, your age ain't all the way up to par. You got to be extremely anointed to even detect that, hey, my age got foolishness in it. You listening to me? When you young, your tuntun will talk for you. You know your tuntun? When you are a young man, your, 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 your growth spurts talk to you. You make decisions off of that. I remember I could hear the voice of God when I was younger, but when I went, how can I say it? When I received the anointing of increase, something happened to my mind. You had two systems trying to echo in, in, in the mind. The other system saying, well, now what you got to use, you got to use, you got to use what God gave. <laughs> I'm talking real talk here because some of you women on here, once you see your breasts growing and your, your, your body growing, Satan going to tell you, you know, you know, uh, uh, well, I'm talking to you in here. I'm talking to you up in here. (laughs) 
Satan will bring you in the mirror too. <laughs> Satan will bring you in the mirror too. Bring you in the mirror and, and tell you all type of stuff. Hey. Hey. You need to know this when you're young. Because you got to break that curse. Because once you go with a satanic man, that's done. You done did it. Now you got to deal with the demons that come forth from that. Are you hearing me? Saints. If a satanic man have a child with you, the child is a demon manifested. That's one of his demons manifested. The power of God, once it get to you as a mother, now will aim at that child being delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints, I got to say this. I got to be careful of hanging around certain people because then, then you won't eat hot Cheetos and all this stuff. I'm gonna get back. I'm, 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 I'm in. I'm in two things right now. I'm in raw anointing. I'm in. I'm in uh, uh, comedy anointing, comedic anointing. I'm all over, and I'm, I'm in wealth anointing too. <laughs> Gotta be careful. You get around certain people, then you want you the salt demon and all that stuff start trying to get you. Beware the salt people. The salt people. You get around them, then you start. You up there. Somebody look at you from the back. What you doing? I'm peeing in salt. I'm peeing in some salt. This is salt. I'm peeing in some salt. Okay? You need to be saved. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Up there, they look at you from the back. I'm bringing this salt, this pepper right here. This is salt and pepper. You should be the last one trying to judge me because you're the, you the reason why I'm bringing this salt and pepper. Hanging around you. The salty spirit. Try to grab you. You're the reason why I'm bringing all this salt. You want to try to judge me because you're looking at me from the back, pitting my salt in. <laughs> Where was you when the spirit that was on you then came up and off on me? Where was your antennas? It's salt. Up there, you hang around certain people that got you eating hot chips. You hotter than a mug. Your heart beating out your chest. You can't even breathe, right? You go to sleep. You wake up. You can't even handle all the hot stuff. you like, no, 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 no wonder this person is a monster. This person is a monster. <laughs> no wonder they're able to eat all this hot stuff. They be you up there eat the hot stuff. You waking up every two hours. I need some water. I need some. This, these, these, men don't let these women get you. Because something wrong with them. They, they got supernatural chests and supernatural throats. <laughs> don't let them trick us. Don't don't let them question your masculinity. <laughs> Cause they got supernatural throats and supernatural chesses and all of that. They're transglycerides. <laughs> they're, they're transglycerides. Flow different than ours, sir. Sir, I don't know. I think they got serpent abilities, cause all that, all that they be sopping down and acting like they're normal. 
You see a young girl in jail. You go eat the. I need some water. You got some water on you? No, I ain't get shot, man. Ain't nobody shot me, man. I ain't got no two pain. I just need some water. That's all. But she up there. Just... You gotta be careful. Don't let them test our masculinity, cause that's what they try to do. Try to test our masculinity. Try to test it, cause they try glyceroids. They try glyceroids. The trans, the transglyceroids. That'd be the worst scene you ever see. You walk, you walk home, you see your wife, her back turned to the table. She had the table turns. Hey, hey, hey! Honey, are you ready for food? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm ready for food. Where my plate at? I was just yelling you down because I just want to make sure that my plate is on the table when I'm ready. That's <laughs> I just I just want to make sure that my plate was on the table when I was ready. That's all. That's all. I just wanted to get your attention because you was you was enjoying your food. So I wanted to make sure <laughs> I wanted to make sure that. See the key, and this is just a little joke joke, but it's still serious. If you train somebody with certain abilities, you don't want them to live longer than you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on. I'm moving on. Let me move on. Don't try to stop me. Don't try to stop me. See, some of y'all, you going about your business, but when you trained. Because <laughs> you be up in heaven walking, going to your mansion. <laughs> and you look down at earth and you see, oh, oh. You done running out the gate. The angel like, hey, 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 hey. Where you going? We got a feast today. We got a feast. Now, nah, now nah, I'm going back down. That man inside, the man inside the house up there start choking. <coughs> she calling 911. You done came down from the heavenlies up there choking him. Get your other behind up out of here. You ain't pay no bills. This all my money. <laughs> I don't like you. I ain't never looked like you. You. They don't even know what happened to the man. They like, we don't know. His heart is good. Everything good. Meanwhile, you just standing right there at the hospital bed. <laughs> you stand at the hospital bed, making sure. See, you ain't attacking them right now because you don't want them to catch none. You don't want them to call no forensic doctor, no psychic, no, 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 no. You don't want them to call nothing. They sense nothing. Tell, tell, start telling. So you chilling. The Lord wants to raise you up to be his business partner in the earth. You are a kingdom citizen. And there is financial advantage. There's a financial advantage that the Lord has given to you. None of the assignments that God is calling you to fulfill will leave you broke. Supernatural money will sustain you and upgrade the way you live. So saints, here, hereby you see the two functionalities of supernatural money. It sustains you. That means that you ain't arrived at your harvest, your, your wealthy place yet. But then it upgrades you because you will arrive. Watch this here. 
Having a wealthy and luxurious life is a part of your royal position. You don't have time to be distracted and accessible to everybody. Now, saints, let's go to verse 22. Traditional people, uh, chapter, uh, uh, page 22. Traditional people will affect your submission and affect and effectiveness with the wealth anointing. Traditional people will affect. Now, traditional people are money cometh demons. They broke. Their counsel is broke. They will reassign you to poverty spirits if you listen to them. You caught that? Reassign you to poverty spirits. You'll start listening to poverty spirits. Poverty spirits in your emotions, your characteristics, your personality. You, you, you will birth poverty in how you carry yourself. Traditional people will affect your submission and effectiveness with the wealth anointing. Avoid speaking in depth with them. Y'all got to remember what I say, because you will speak to traditional people every now and again. You're going to encounter them. But it says avoid speaking in depth with them. That mean you still could protect your anointing upon meeting them. Or, or sometimes you won't detect that they're traditional until you say something. And then you see their reaction. Then you can detect, oh, this is a traditional person. You see that they're dusty. But that's not always given to you offhand at first glance. So it says avoid speaking in depth with them. Or allowing them to plant garbage in your mind about being prosperous. My book is the bomb, man. I, I, see, I read this the other night. Why I'm reading it now? Because I read this the other night and I said, she. I said, what book is this? And then I looked over, I said, oh, this is my book. All right. It says, they are assigned by Satan to keep you broke and allow the thief to keep stealing from you. So they are, they are customer service reps for the thief. Whoa. Whoa. They are customer service reps for the thief. So the thief is using them to recruit you to be underneath that system of the thief. Keep on stealing from you. Now watch this here. Look what it says. This is so powerful. Look what it says right here. You will never be a full doer of the word listening to a religious or traditional person. They will speak scriptures to you misinterpret the meaning to you, causing you to stumble and miss all the prosperity that God has for you. Oh, this hot. This hot. I'm going to read that one again. Ver uh, chapter, uh, uh, page 22 rather. You will never be a full doer of the word listening to a religious and or traditional person. Also, if I add this in, because religious and traditional people are non-doers of the word, they deceive themselves. They do a lot of religious stuff to make themselves feel like they're saved and they're delivered and they're set free. They're, so you're going to be a non-doer of the word because they are already non-doers of the word. Hallelujah. It says they will cause you to stumble and miss all the prosperity that God has for you. It says, while walking in love, walk in wisdom. Wow. That's a wisdom door. That's a wisdom door, baby. That's a wisdom door right there. Look what it says right there in chapter 22. While, uh, uh, page 22. While walking in love, walk in wisdom. Be very careful who you let impart information to you. Discern snake food financially. What? Snake food financially, financial snake food, discern words from people that will quench the wealth anointing on your life. You have to defend and protect the divine knowledge God gives you about money and proceed with producing that knowledge.
So traditional people are divine knowledge aborters. They abort divine knowledge. Wow. Saints, we got to sit on that one. So when the seed of the word of God is inside of you, is in you, but a traditional person, you go talk with them, they will abort that seed. They will kill that baby that's inside of you, that seed. Saints, are you hearing this? Financial snake food. Snake food financially. Oh, I love this. Look at page 20. How many of y'all loving this? <clears throat> to flow in wealth, the dimension of divine wealth. See, there's wealth, there's divine wealth. You have to be a person that has mastered sowing and following the Lord with your money. To live out of this wealth realm, you have to be disciplined on fire for God, sober, and not given to your feelings, emotions, and offenses. Wow. Wow, man. Wow, wow. Are, are you catching this? To live out of this wealth realm, you have to be disciplined. You know what discipline mean? There's a schedule that you won't betray. Wow. Wow. Discipline mean that there is a schedule that I won't betray. There is steps that's ordered for me that I will never turn my back on. I never heard those definitions before. That discipline means that I refuse to betray a divine schedule. Wow. Look at this. To live out of this wealth realm. See, this is what the wealth realm is all about. Sticking to the schedule. Look at this. You have to be disciplined on fire for God. That's dealing with your attitude, your expectation, your momentum. Look, you're energized. You're on fire for God, meaning that God is your excitement. The Lord Jesus is your excitement. You're not worried about all the other stuff that people get excited about. You're sticking to the excitement of the Lord, his presence. When you're on fire for God, you pray. When you're on fire for God, you praise. You rejoice. You think about the word of God. You decree and declare things. Saints, I've realized something. When I decree and I declare things, I think about all the children of God that don't decree and declare. They don't decree a thing and it be established. And I think about it and I say, why aren't children of God decreeing things? Because that's not, they're not moving in the schedule. My God. See, I look and I wonder, how could they not be decreeing and prophesying and speaking over their day and, 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 and decreeing money cometh to me now? How come they're not loosening harvests and loosening provision and decreeing that they're living out the benefits of God and they're finishing their assignment and they're submitting themselves to the man of God that they're assigned to and they believe in their prophet and they they sowing and they walking in bountiful sowing? Why are they not decreeing their success in the spirit? And it's all about discipline, being on fire for God, being excited about the schedule. Sober. 
It says, if you're going to live out of the wealth realm, you have to be on fire for God and sober. Now, what does sobriety mean? You realize that Satan is using something to affect your progress and prosperity. Wow. Sober means that there's something that God is looking for from you every moment of your life. So sober, it gives you a realization that Satan may be using a little thing to affect me, to hinder me. And also, the Lord is looking for something from me every moment of my life. So you got to be sober so that you can attend to the needs of God. Attend to the needs of God mean bend your knees to God. It's a sign of submission, like you're worshiping, you're in complete focus. On fire for God, sober and not given to feelings, emotions, and offenses. The wealth power of God is given to those who are serious and mean business about God's business. The, I'm going to say this again. The wealth power of God is given to those who are serious and mean business about God's business. Oh, my gosh. Saints, look what I'm about to say here. This hot. Wealth is a militant path. I can explain that. Where the Lord has taken you over and is ruling you. That's why a lot of people stay broke and dusty. Because they won't let God rule them. I'm saying if you live the totality of your life broke, I ain't talking about those of you all, you, you working your way up. We all got to work our way up. We all start from the bottom if we work in the kingdom system. But the Lord has to take you over and rule you. Remember when King Jesus gives you plenty of money, you have to have a sound mind, a willing heart, and a submitted life. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Saints, if we look at these three avenues and departments, you could easily detect why you're not a dominator of wealth. Because is your mind sound? Do you have a willing heart? Do you shut down on God? And do you have a submitted life? Is your life resisting the authority that God sent? Is your life rejecting the person that God has anointed to teach you and train you in the word? To bring forth that spiritual man. Wow. That, that person that is perfect, full of light, full of purity and good works. Wow, wow, wow. Full of patience and virtue. My God. That virtuous woman, that kingly man. See, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See remember what God told Jacob, that king's going to proceed out of you. Oh, my God. So, so there's a king that you proceed out of them. It says wealth is a militant path where the Lord has taken you over and is ruling you. Remember when King Jesus gives you plenty of money, you have to have a sound mind, a willing heart, and a submitted life. Look what it says. Large money will destroy you if you are not trained and mentored into how to honor. Whoa. Honor is recognizing that God is your audience. So he wants to be entertained by you. A sower is an entertainer for divine presence. A 
A sower is an entertainer of divine presence. See, a sower is operating in performance power. They're performing on a stage for God. That's what your altar is. Your altar is a stage. You're on that stage performing. My goodness. And see, large money going to destroy you if you don't know how to keep on performing. You can't take no breaks. You got to stay in performance mode. See, um, there's something about when somebody is performing like they eat different. They, they, they don't want to look a certain way. They, 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 they operate differently. Why? Because they're in performance mode. See, what I want you to catch is performance mode is, is, is a mindset of the sower that they are ready in season and out of season to give God pleasure. I want to take this book back up, but I feel it. Come on, man. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want to take this book back up and keep on reading to you, but I feel it right now. I feel it right now. Saints, I feel these words that I'm speaking right now because if you ever lose the idea that God is your audience and you are the performer, you're going to get dusty. You're going to forget your lines. You're going to forget your part. You're going to forget the ability of pleasure that been given to you to perform for God. He wants something from you that you got. And until you give it to him, he going to have something for you that he got that he won't give. See, saints, God will hold up what he has to pleasure you until you give up what you have to pleasure him.